Hello there, Kettle Land. I'm your host, Tony Barlow, in the Storm Center here on a Sunday afternoon. The weekend actually turned out all right. Saturday, of course, not very nice, but our Sunday we cleared things out. More sunshine out there today. It really turned into a pretty nice day. It's a little cool, a little breezy out there. Certainly temperatures are a little still below normal, but overall not too bad out there today. So hopefully you were able to get out and enjoy it. Hopefully you didn't plant any plants, so at least not anything that could be hurt by the frost because it does look like we'll have some frost potential out there tonight, especially tonight. Temperatures back into the mid-30s. Of course, we have the combination of uh, fairly light winds tonight, brilliant clear skies, and uh, an area of high pressure uh, overhead along with just a cool air mass in place. And I think we're going to see some frosty conditions overnight tonight. So if you do have something like that, Cover that stuff up tonight. Uh, looks like maybe east of Sioux Falls we might have a threat tomorrow night as well. So stay tuned. We'll keep you up to date on that as well. All right. Let's talk about the weather this week. Kind of an interesting week ahead for us. Uh, we are going to be looking at, for the most part, uh, looks like quiet conditions early in the week. Second half of the week, maybe not so much uh, as the system begins to pull on in here. All right, here's a look at the latest uh, weather model information. We're going to start with the GFS model. This is the 12Z run, so uh, pretty good run for us here as we're looking at it Sunday afternoon. Uh, of course, we're done with the rain for for now of, of uh, yesterday and last night and even early this morning. That's moved out of here. Now as we continue through the beginning of the week, we'll just kind of tick through time here. And here we go through the overnight tonight to Monday morning. Again, this area of high pressure right up here influencing our weather and uh, really cooling things down. You can kind of see right along this isobar is probably where we'll have the best chance of those uh, those coldest conditions because uh, that's where the pressure will be um, highest with that high pressure moving through. As we continue then through the week, we'll go into Monday at noon. Very, very quiet. It looks gorgeous through the day Monday. Temperature's a little cool, maybe a little breezy, but uh, overall, lots of sunshine and, and dry weather expected as well. So this is Monday night. As we continue through Monday night into Tuesday, here comes our first little hiccup here already by Tuesday, and it does look like we'll call for a few showers and thunderstorms into uh, western portions of South Dakota already on Tuesday. Uh, that activity Tuesday should stay confined to the west. We don't, central South Dakota, we're keeping things dry for you Tuesday, but as we get into the day on Wednesday, we will start to uh, see at least a better chance of precip central South Dakota. This area of low pressure is to blame. Uh, the track has been all over the map as far as the models are concerned, so the the forecast still a little tenuous uh, as far as nailing things down exactly but this low pressure center is going to move to our south and then a lot of the models try to curve it up to the north you'll see that here so here we are this is tuesday night as we go into wednesday there is a pretty good chance of some precip uh, potentially on wednesday afternoon and as we continue then into thursday here comes that low it's again our pattern generally is pretty slow moving we don't have a lot of movement going on. We've been in some blocking patterns and so this low really has nowhere to go at this point middle of the week. So it's going to kind of sit here and just south of us into Nebraska and spin and spin up showers and maybe some thunderstorms as well. Now we're moving into Friday time frame. You can see we're still calling for some showers, some thunder showers. By far it looks like the west will be wettest underneath this pattern as we go through this week. And uh, I'll show you in another model here. Sorry, we're ticking through Sunday, the weekend, so we'll, we'll leave in some showers for Saturday. I dried us out a little bit, uh, maybe some wishful thinking for Sunday, but uh, we'll have to see how this week pans out. Either way, first half of the week looks pretty dry. Second half of the week starting to look pretty wet. Now here is the HPC. This is what they're thinking over the next five days as far as precip. Notice two and a half inches potentially. Is, this is a model output, so again, not you know take it with a grain of salt in many instances but two and a half inches across the west so we use this as a trend west looks like it'll see the heaviest precip good news for the northeast where it is already very wet it looks like fairly dry conditions or at least lesser chances of heavy precip for northeastern south dakota i do want to give you a different look here a different weather model this is the canadian weather model to kind of show you kind of the comparison and contrast uh, these two models and again, all that means the GFS is an American-made model. The Canadian government made a Canadian model. So it just has a few different variables, give or take. We'll go through time on this one as well. So here we're going through Tuesday. And you can see this one keeps Tuesday a little more dry for western South Dakota. As we get into Wednesday, though, certainly there's those showers and storms for the west. And then as we continue into Thursday and Friday, the Canadian pretty much agrees. The one difference you'll notice here is 
we're still keeping precip very much confined to western South Dakota while the east is trying to miss out on some of this activity as we go into the end of the week and that area of low pressure I'll move this up you can see it just sitting down there around Colorado spinning up those showers so that's going to be the general pattern this week I did want to show you this as well this is a twisterdata.com if you're into storm chasing or, or tracking thunderstorms check this site out they have some great instability parameters a ways out of course it's tough to measure that stuff so again you take it with a grain of salt but uh, I did want to show you that with the showers and storms this week, we're not looking at any real widespread severe weather at this point. Uh, this is CAPE, and this is one, something that we use to basically measure instability. And you can see we basically have none. It's all the CAPE early in the week is way down in Texas, or this is probably midweek. I think this is uh, Wednesday at noon. So as we go to Wednesday nights, you can see same story. Not a whole lot going on. I do want to skip ahead, though. I'm kind of guessing as far as time here because this yes so this is next weekend and again we're way out there now this is next saturday you see we start to get a little instability building into parts of eastern kelly land so maybe a better chance of some storms there all right so there is your update for the week of may 16th and uh, hopefully you have a great week again enjoy the first couple of days this week because end of the week really a question mark with some wet weather coming in for now, I'm meteorologist Tony Barlow from the Storm Center. Thanks for tuning in.